they don't have roots, so the only water they get is through the air. Yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of humidity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So if you look, that's a pretty big hill right there. If you know anything about the low country, we have no hills. It is flat, flat. But what's unique is this place is called Stony Landing Road for a reason. Because of the limestone we have here. That is called Cooper Moral Limestone. It was formed about 5 million years ago when this whole area was covered in ocean. And when you have ocean, you've got coral, you've got clams and oysters and shrimps and sharks and whales and turtles and all kinds of stuff. Well, eventually that stuff dies, mixes with sand, and it's pressed together and it forms a sedimentary rock called limestone. Limestone, because it has all kinds of shells in it, is calcium rich. So it allows plants to grow here that usually don't grow anywhere else, like the southern shield fern. And then if you look up, we have the southern sugar maple. You're not going to find southern sugar maple very many places. You have to have calcium rich soils. And that's the southern sugar maple. And what's really interesting is Dr. Richard Porche. I don't know if you've heard that name before, but Native Americans along the coast ate lots and lots of oysters and what they would do is they would put them in huge piles all the shells called oyster middens eventually those oyster middens got covered by dirt and eventually by trees the trees that moved in were southern sugar maples and because they're a maple they turn bright red during the fall so mr porsche went and flew an airplane down the coast and found the red clumps of trees and then went in and found all these Native American sites because of it. Smart. So it's it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yep. And now another plant you need to know is that one behind us over here, right? That is the wax myrtle. Anybody been to Myrtle Beach? The 
Does anybody know why Myrtle Beach is called Myrtle Beach? Wax Myrtle. Because of the Wax Myrtle, not Myrtle the Turtle, okay? The Wax Myrtle, because it's very important to the settlers. One, it's leaves, if you grab the leaves, you can crush them up and use them as an insect repellent, all right? So if you ever need some insect repellent, find you a wax myrtle. Next, you'll see that they have some berries on it. The female plant has berries. So it's what's called dioecious, which means two houses in Latin. So one plant will be male and one plant will be female. Most plants have both male and female on one plant. That's called monoecious. But the female produces berries. You can collect those berries, heat them up, and melt the wax off of them. You can use that wax to form candles called bayberry candles. Does anybody know number one? Third. Rice. Rice was worth as much as gold. Everything that could be turned into rice field was turned into rice field, right? It was, it was because of rice that slavery started in South Carolina. It was not cotton. Cotton perpetuated slavery. It was rice that was done it. And the reason is because the English knew not how to grow rice, but the Africans did. So with them, they brought the technology and the know-how on how to grow rice. It was the largest migration of human beings in the world, and it was a forced migration. One out of three Africans did not make it, right? By the 1700s, there was more people of African descent in South Carolina than European descent. Charleston was the number one importer of enslaved Africans, right? And it made South Carolina the wealthiest nation, wealthiest colony in the New World because of rice. Now, just on the Cooper River alone, there was 780 miles of canals dug, 18,000 acres of land cleared. Oh. It was the largest movement of dirt. Everybody know the pyramids? There was more dirt moved and the Cooper River than it took to build the pyramids. Take your time here. There's a lot of logs, so that way nobody gets stuck. Give everybody room in order to maneuver back and forth. It's always hard. We got a little current through here too. Huh? Oh Lord. Been there since the dawn of time. 
This is the canal. This was made in 1793 to 1800, right? This was hand dug by a thousand people. Now, these, these individuals were enslaved Africans from plantations around, but they were they're paid a salary. So they were paid sort of kind of. It wasn't that much, right? So, um, but they, it took a thousand people to, to dig it. It was 22 miles long, included 10 locks. Everybody wants to see a lock. They're under Lake Moultrie. I'm sorry. Oh. All right? <laughs> so we just preserved the last mile of that original canal. So you just have to say, take our word from it for it that this is the original canal. It ran from 1800 to 1850. Its job was to get cotton, tobacco, and indigo from the upstate Columbia to Charleston by boat. It link, like I said, it linked the Santee and the Cooper River. You can take the Santee from Columbia to Georgetown, but if you wanted to get from Georgetown, you had to go by ocean to get to Charleston. These river boats weren't designed to go on the ocean, so they were constantly getting sunk.